M16 machine guns versus somebody that's taking a pocket knife, a Swiss army knife, into a fight. That, that, that's how, how it's kind of like. It's pretty ridiculous, but today in this video, I'm gonna be showing you behind the scenes to these different uncommon ways to scale any ad campaign. And I can guarantee you, those courses out there on Facebook ads, they don't even cover a fraction of what I'm about to reveal to you here today. Because today, I'm gonna be taking you behind the scenes to a session that I did with a client to walk you through what are some of the ways to systematically scale this year and beyond, taking into account the iOS changes and all of the different changes in the algorithm as well. And if you're somebody that maybe hit a roadblock after you tried scaling ad campaigns and perhaps it wasn't as profitable as before, then today, by the end of this video, you're gonna be able to discover some of the different techniques that you should be utilizing if you wanna be able to increase your budget, ad spend, but also maintain your level of profitability. Let's begin. Because the thing is, if you think about it, like utilizing my example, like if the Cambodian business owner targeting Cambodians has to pay the same price as a mega big US corporation targeting Cambodians, you know, it's not a really fair, you know, battlefield, right? It's literally somebody armed with M16 machine guns versus somebody that's taking a pocket knife, a Swiss army knife into a fight. That, that, that's how, how it's kind of like, right? Welcome to 8, 2, 4, 6, 10 Ernie's. Okay, Tenneries, uh, Ernie, let's just quickly begin with the audience that you're in, who you serve, and the result you help your audience generate. Go ahead. Yeah, I help uh, SME owners and e-commerce, uh, people who had uh, who is doing e-commerce in the internet to scale their business to uh, six figures. Okay, very nice. And Ernie, I remember um, your journey. Walk us through, so what has happened so far since you started and what got you here? I remember just a few weeks ago, you posted, you did, your first six-figure month, which is absolutely amazing in you know the, the, the few months that you've been with us. Walk us through what you did, what went well, what is the current roadblock or challenge right now? Yeah, so we started this business at June, but we start scaling it at July. At July, we have, uh, I think, in ROAS of 10, okay, over 10. And then after that, I think the after we scale in the Chinese market, I, the lead cost had gone from 3 ringgit to approximately 20 to 30 ringgit. Yeah. And at last month, our ROAS is dropped until one, one point something. So I, I don't know what's the issue <laughs> about in this case. It, it's hard to scale over multiple six figure. You managed to scale up quickly when the co uh, cost per lead was less than, was about three ringgit, which is roughly, um, for those of you outside of Malaysia, that would be roughly $1 cost per lead targeting Chinese speaking market based in Malaysia, right? And the issue now is the number seems to have gone haywire and it's not as profitable as it used to be. And we are trying to pinpoint what the problem is because you are unsure of the problem. Is that pretty accurate to what has happened so far? Correct. Okay, great. So. Um, let's take a look. Now, one thing I do want to mention, okay? So, um, when early started this in June, July, one thing that we got to pay attention to is like times, right? So, this is when iOS 14 um, update has already rolled out, okay? So, it's not like a pre-iOS thing and then post-iOS, the numbers went insane, right? So, when the numbers were low, you know, it was doing good times, right? Scaled to six figures. And then now, it's still profitable. It's not bleeding yet, right? So, we want to be able to make sure that doesn't happen. And we, the first thing we always got to do is we got to identify what the problem is, okay? So, to your knowledge, has anything changed since? Have you changed the targeting, the copy? Have you changed something in the back end, the tweaks, the offer? What do you think is... Yeah, we launched three video ads and 10 ad copy every week when we scale. And then we turn off that those that high cost per lead and then we keep scaling like this. But we cannot scale under 15 ringgit per, per lead. <laughs> we always exit on that. But the booking rate and the application rate is, is, is the same. Yeah. Okay, so Ernie, because you said you started this in June and July, was this a relatively new Facebook ad account? Yeah, correct. Okay. And we open a few business manager account and then <laughs> the result is the same thing. Were the new... Okay, so so before I, I, I probe deeper, okay? Uh, guys, I have a theory. It's, it's a conspiracy theory on Facebook, 
Okay, and, and, and here's what it is. I notice that when we split test ad accounts and when we create a brand new ad account, depending on the country that we create the ad account in and the currency we choose to get built in, we notice that there is a significant difference when our ad account is built in a different currency in different country versus in a country that is based in US paying US dollars. Okay, so let me explain. So a lot of our ad accounts is in US dollars in US currency. And many of these ad accounts, we spent millions of dollars on it. However, one day out of the blue, it's pretty recent, I was discussing with a team and we asked ourselves, I wonder what would happen if we set up a brand new account in a developing country or a third world country and we paid it in that local currency. And I said, I wonder if the price points would be different. So what I did was we created a brand new account that is based in Malaysia this time, paying in Malaysian ringgit, targeting only Malaysians with a different pixel, separate pixel installed altogether. And the results was shocking. The results was we are paying close to half of what our US account was paying when targeting a Malaysian audience. Now, that being said, I'm pretty sure when we take a look at the account and the ads, right, we're going to be able to find some of the things that we can work on and improve. I'm pretty sure if you created a new ad account as though you are somebody living in that other country, right? So John says, so how do you set up your account in a different country based on where you live? So what you will imagine is, you're gonna use a VPN, okay? I don't know if they, are, they go you know, that much, but that's what we did, right? So you use a VPN to change the country as though you're connecting from this third world country. If you are targeting different countries, maybe your takeaway from this call, like for some of you that I know is spending, you know, well over five figures in ad spend, for all you know, this call alone, if all this did was help you save 40% on your ad spend by just creating ad accounts targeting different countries, Ernie is utilizing the high ticket application funnel, which in fact, I think is a funnel that we've not covered in a while, right? Um, we have looked at low ticket funnels, we looked at challenge funnels, webinar funnels, but it's been a while. Based on this, walk us through what happens next. When a person usually gets on this call, what is the track record and the close rate over here and what usually happens on this yeah, application call? I also had right the closing rate in the in the sheet. I think the number of closes. Uh, so based on my data, I found that the the opt-in rate spiked, but the booking rate and the show rate and the closing rate is still the same. So the cl closing rate is around 30%, I think. Well done. And what is the offer price at? As, as start, it is 4K and then we make it 5K, 5K now. I see. Okay, so the offer is 5K. What currency is this? Uh, MYR. Number one is, so the way to think about this is, okay, number one, it could be traffic, meaning right now there was this change in the campaigns. Maybe the same audience is now being tapped out because they're seeing the same ad again and again. We'll find out. Maybe it's the same people that is used to seeing the same offer over and over again. Therefore, the offer is getting saturated. Maybe, we'll find out. Or maybe it could be the case that this is just the status quo of Facebook ads right now. And there's nothing that we all can do about it other than to increase how much a customer is worth to us. Therefore, making our funnel deeper, right? Th this could be one of a few things, right? So the first thing that we're gonna do is we are going to explore what happens when our return on ad spend is not like it used to be. So the first thing that we want to notice is, well, this was both after the iOS 14 update. So we know it's definitely not the iOS 14 update, right? So what led to the decrease or the crash in return on ad spend over the last two weeks, right? Like Ernie mentioned, okay? There's a few different things, okay? So I'm going to talk about what to do and how to think about what happens when your return on ad spend is not like it used to be, when in fact, one time it used to be brilliant, okay? The different scenarios, okay? First scenario is same audience seeing the same creative again and again, okay? That's the first one. That means that you are reaching fatigue in your creatives. What we wanna be able to think about next is you have been hammering this pretty hard, right? You, in the last three months back to back, you have been spending five figures a month 
on ad spend alone, right? And I, and I love how aggressive you've been in just doing this the last three months. So well done, okay? So what we want to be able to do in terms of audience size is to think about, well, now does it make sense for us to scale our audiences by targeting, number one, broader, because now you've been scaling. Remember, all types of scaling is just either horizontal or vertical, okay? So what you've been doing so far up to this point, if you've been scaling vertically, what is vertical scaling? Vertical scaling is adding more ad budget to an existing campaign, right? It's working, so let me spend more, right? That's vertical scaling. Horizontal scaling is it's working, therefore let me target wider, right? More and loosen up the parameters so I'm targeting a bigger audience. But here's the, here's the short answer to the 90-minute session that we did that day, okay? And it's basically this. If you want to be able to utilize no targeting, no targeting basically works like this. In order to utilize no targeting well, you got to be able to set up a campaign. And inside that campaign, you would have three different types of audiences. Because if you just put it all together in an, a campaign that has got, you know, just a random uh, bunch of cold audiences, that's going to be horrible, right? When, when I say no targeting, it's literally no targeting. It's targeting, you know, people who live, who is age group of 18 to 60 years old living in country name. That's it. That's a targeting, right? Which is basically you're telling Facebook, as long as the person's alive, they're a good fit, right? That's, that's what you're telling Facebook. Now, obviously, if you did that in a normal setting, it would be horrible because, right, you're getting a bunch of random people um, being targeted. So your ad cost is going to be very expensive. So if you want to scale utilizing no targeting, the way to do that is you must have these three things, okay? Number one, inside that campaign, the first thing you got to have is, I'm going to use red color, is you need to have a hot audience, okay? So what is a hot audience? This would be somebody that is maybe has bought something from you in the past right a buyer right uh somebody that has given you some sort of email at the very least right but somebody who, who knows like and trust you okay so what if some of you are going but Ping Jun, i don't have existing buyers well it means that you're not ready for this method just yet this is a scaling method okay this only works if you are already profitable and you want to be able to just pour more money and and, and pour gasoline into a little fire, right? So the first requirement is inside that campaign, that's your first audience. Now what's gonna happen is, so because it's CBO, right? Campaign budget optimization, it means that your campaign, you set your budget at the campaign level. So let's say the budget is, let's just take a thousand dollars, right? So what's gonna happen is, Facebook is going to determine how to spend this $1,000 in this campaign. Okay. Now, usually what happens is your hot audience will usually convert the best, right? But the problem is the hot audience is probably a small audience, right? Because it's just buyers and leads and, and, and your best people. So what's going to happen right now is maybe on day one, Facebook might spend, let's say, $300 over here. Okay, day one, spend $300 over here. And after that, Facebook says, I can't find more people like this because it's we've already targeted everybody inside this hot audience. So what's going to happen next is, number two, inside this same campaign, you want to have a warm audience. Now, what is a warm audience? Sometimes you call it warm. It could be lukewarm, meaning lukewarm is kind of like an audience that may not know you, but because they have this specific interest, they're more likely to like your work. So for example, this would be like, if I am marketing one of my digital marketing stuff, I know that if I'm targeting somebody who likes click funnels, they may not necessarily know me, but the fact that they like click funnels tells me that there's a good chance that they would like what it is that I do, right? So that to me is kind of considered lukewarm, right? So that's lukewarm. Now what's gonna happen now is you have a lukewarm audience. And then number three, the third audience that you have is a completely cold audience. Now this cold audience here is where you have literally no targeting. No targeting means like what I said, it's somebody living in 18 to 60 years old living in the US. That's my targeting, okay? So obviously if you put this in a completely cold audience campaign, this thing's gonna crush you. It's, it's gonna make you bleed money so bad. Why? Because it's not targeted. 
But when you put them under the same campaign, here's, here's what happens. The analogy that Marcus utilized, I thought was brilliant, and I didn't give him the analogy. He came up with it himself, right? How many of you here remember what and that was on the call, right? Ernie, were you on that call? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let's say right now I organized this fishing trip, right? The game changer intensive fishing trip. And I said, guys, we're going on this retreat. Okay, let me just be upfront. Food is not provided. There's no hotel. We're going to be out in the wilderness. It's every man for himself. The only thing you get is a fishing rod, right? Best of luck, right? And this is a $10,000 retreat, okay? So if you want in, okay, send me a PM. Okay, we're going to do this trip together. So for some reason, all of you decided this is going to be an amazing epic fishing trip. So all of you showed up. And right now, naturally, who are going to be the leaders? The leaders is going to be Paul, Jamie, Tom, right? Um, Thomas, right? Because they've got some level of experience, right? Maybe they went like a couple of times, right? Who knows? So what's going to happen is, so we are, the, thing, the way you think about it is, is we are the untargeted audience. We are untrained in Facebook world. What's that? The untrained pixel. And we have no idea what we're doing. So if you think about it, we are over here. So this is us. Okay, this is us. So right now we're going to this pond over here, this huge lake. And right now what happens is we have our four very experienced fishermen who has at least went fishing before. So Jamie says, hey, you know what? This is going to be a great spot. I've been to this spot before the last time I was here and I caught a huge barracuda. Then Thomas says, oh, you know what? I've been over here, right? And this place was amazing. And Paul says, you know, I've been over here. Now, if you think about this, this is what they are. This is basically, they've got experience. They have seen what a conversion is like. They know where to go fishing. So what we are essentially doing is we have set up a team of experienced people, but the majority is all of us, right? The rest of us, we have never been fishing. We have no idea how it works. We have no idea how to put on a bait. And even if we didn't know how to put on a bait, right? Some of you are gonna be like, oh, I gotta put this worm onto this thing and it's alive and it's smelly and it stinks, right? And we're complaining the entire time. So. So what we want to be able to do is we want to be able to have this set up. Why? Because we might have four experienced people here, but the majority, guess what? The majority is still over here, right? The, the majority is everything else over here. So what they are essentially doing is they are training us to learn how to fish. So a great way to scale is to be able to create a no targeting audience and merge it with your best audiences. Step number one, go target our neighbors, who is, first of all, a lot richer, right, than us, let's face it. So step number one, go target Singaporeans, hands okay. down, okay, Chinese speaking. Then after that, yeah, go target Taiwan. So this is how you scale, right, which is like number four, right? Um, country, right, same audience, but this also, you know, under uh, um, scaling, right, targeting a different audience. Yeah, go try a different country, um, and that's how you scale, because like the world is at our fingertips, right? Um, we want to go beyond just thinking about the people around us. Well, I hope you enjoyed the behind the scenes to this coaching call. If you enjoyed this video, let me know in the comments below what your biggest takeaway is, and as always, be sure to smash the like button. It does help the channel out a little bit, and to subscribe to this channel if you want to be notified of future videos, just like this one. Now, some of you asking me, how can I be part of this process? How can I ask you questions? How can I have you coach me or mentor me? Um, we want to make sure that we are working with the people that's the right fit. You'll need to fill up a form. There's a link right below this video. Somebody on my team might give you a call to interview you to see if the right fit for each other. And if you want to apply and see if you're a good fit, then all you need to do is click on this link in the description box below and my team will be in touch with you.